type of research, and even people who aren't. Sure. You know, we all wish that everybody could could be looking into this because the more people we have seeing what's going on in the world, uh, the better. But even the people who don't even know about what's going on in the world, and this book would be good for them as well because it would take them out of the ego if they if they really put it into practice because you have to put it in practice. You can read all the books in the world, but if you don't, you know, put it into practice and integrate it into your lifestyle, uh, it's it's not really worth much at that point. There's always a two-step process. That's, that's completely right. Absolutely. Hmm. But if it's just even the general public would remove themselves from the ego, then they would be less susceptible, if at all, except you know, susceptible to the manipulations that are occurring. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good point. They they need uh, the people stuck in their egos, and Eckhart Tolle really opens the door and uh, unlocks the door, opens it, and shows it to you. So that this is the way out. And uh, yeah, I find like there's no manipulation, there's no type of guru stuff with him or anything of that nature. It's really a beautiful, uh, truly enlightened man. You know, whatever you want to call it, be it Christ consciousness or anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, living in the Tao, having the Buddha awakened within you. I mean, all those things are just terms that are pointing to this uh, this spiritual state that this man has attained. And he explains what, what happened to him. Uh, in the beginning of the book, he went through these intense states of anxiety, mm-hmm. despair. I mean, he was constantly living in that, in that type of uh, thing. And then he started to realize uh, that he had this, uh, what was it, an insight about himself, about, you know, it seems like his mind was fighting back and forth. And the question was, you know, how many are there of me within myself? Are there two of me? Hmm. And which one is real and which one isn't? Mm-hmm. And when that happened, the, uh, I guess, the, you know, the... the the realization occurred, and whatever was driving him into these states of anxiety and mm. severe depression just kind of dropped away. Yeah. Huh. And, and he, he, he fell asleep and then woke up enlightened or, or, or enlightened. And he went out and lived on the streets for so many years, just marveling at life <laughs> with this silent mind, just observing, you know, becoming the, the watcher. That's. That's what he explains in regards to, to backing away from the ego is not getting caught up in the in the whirlwind of it. You know, if you're yeah. you can liken it to a sort of a tornado. <laughs> the ego is like the tornado or that's swirling around, but in the center is the stillness. The eye of the tornado is still. Hmm. That's a good analogy. That, right? Yeah. If you can get into that center place and become the watcher. Eventually, you can dissipate the ego and, and the way it affects us and stuff like that, which which causes us to project things onto others, things that we do ourselves. We we can project onto other people and blame them for it when we're doing it ourselves. One of the things that we were talking about with what the religious folk can do. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then you know you get beyond that projecting thing into that place, and then you can live from a place of extension where you're extending that same truth that's within all of us, that love. And then there's that resonance that occurs between people, hmm. you know, with the extension. And that's, there, there are some concepts that are that are mentioned in another book up at the site, A Course in Miracles, the difference between proje- projection and extension. But, mm-hmm. you know, and, and totally references that, that, that book as well in The Power of Now. Yeah, I'll read a another excerpt here from the book about the ego. Mm, yeah, please. And its attachments. Uh, it's from a chapter called "Moving Deeply into the Now," a section. Don't seek yourself in the mind. And and the beforehand statement is, I feel that there's still a great deal I need to learn about the workings of my mind before I can get anywhere near full consciousness or spiritual enlightenment. And totally answers, no you don't. The 
the problems of the mind cannot be solved on the level of the mind. Once you have understood the basic dysfunction, there isn't really much else that you need to learn or understand. Studying the complexity of the, of the mind may make you a good psychologist, but doing so won't take you beyond the mind, just as the study of madness isn't enough to create sanity. <laughs> you have already understood the basic mechanics of the unconscious state, identification with the mind, which creates a false self, the ego, as a substitute for your true self rooted in being. You become as a branch cut off from the vine, as Jesus puts it. The, ego, the ego's needs are endless. It feels vulnerable and threatened, and so lives in a state of fear and want. Once you know the basic dis, or how the basic dysfunction operates, there is no need to explore all its countless manifestations. No need to make it into a complex personal problem. The ego, of course, loves that. It is always seeking for something to attach itself to in order to uphold and strengthen its illusory sense of self. And it will readily attach itself to your problems. This is why, for so many people, a large part of their sense of self is intimately connected with their problems. Once this has happened, the last thing they want is to become free of them. That would mean loss of self. There can be a great deal of unconscious ego investment in pain and suffering. So once you recognize the root of unconsciousness of identi as identification with the mind, which of course includes the emotions, you step out of it, you become present. When you are present, you can allow the mind to be as it is without getting entangled in it. Mm. The mind in itself is not dysfunctional. It is a wonderful tool. This function sets in when you seek yourself in it and mistake it for who you are. <laughs> it then becomes the egoic mind and takes over your whole life. Oh yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> very good passage to read. Huh. Yeah, the whole book is just, you know, he doesn't utter a word unless it, it has that, uh, it is of this essence. Because mm -hmm. It's not like he's speaking from the mind. When he speaks, he's speaking from that enlightened place, that, that place within himself. And you can really uh, feel that resonance, because I also have this up at the, on the site as a, an audio book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he reads it himself. And just by listening to his voice, uh, the resonance, you know, I was mentioning the resonance earlier, between that, that inner place within him extending outward it resonates with the inner place within you so when you're listening to him just by listening to his voice he can take you into that place mm -hmm. yeah i remember <clears throat> there are a few videos uh, available um where he, uh, he d does a talk or, or a presentation or, or you know uh, and it's very interesting to listen to him and i think he's were originally born in uh, germany so it has a bit of a special accent too and it's very very interesting, you know, with the way he reads, as you say, the pauses and all of this. Uh, and I definitely recommend people to check out, you know, some of those uh, videos up there also. Have you seen a few of those? I think it's uh, probably good to get an idea of who, uh, who who he is and what he talks about. Yeah, there is a, uh, there is like a list of videos that were, you know, set up at YouTube that I embedded into a page on my site. There's a whole section at the site called Inner Resources. Mm -hmm. And that's where I put up, you know, a lot of stuff from around the web, real things that I find that are important uh, for other people to, to go and educate themselves Excellent. there from the site for free because it's that's what this is all about for me. It's about people getting educated. It's not so much about selling books. Sure, sure. <laughs> that's right. So Definitely, you know, I feel like... A, like I said before, with some of the former shows, I think books are important uh, because uh, you're not dealing with the light of the computer, and they're definitely uh, of a different. There's a different quality, a spiritual quality to books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and right. And to books that you can't get from the computer. And as well, I think it's important to have to have these books, you know, kind of spread out all mm -hmm. over the place so there's records and there's accounts in case there is some type of cataclysm mm -hmm. you know in the future at some point which is very well possible because it has happened in the past sure that's right yeah but 
but nothing to be scared of, you know, nothing to get freaked out about, just, uh, you know, possibilities you have to keep in mind and consider at times. Well, exactly, that's right. If it happens, it happens, but since it hasn't happened yet, there's no reason to worry about it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> that's a good uh, good point. Um, yeah, okay, so, th I mean, that's, again, that's a very good, uh, good idea to head on over to oneheartbooks.com and check out that... Uh, uh, the books that we've been talking about here today and also check out that page with the videos with uh, Eckhart Tolle on them uh, I want to, you know, before we round up this program here today AJ, I want to leave the last few minutes to you so you can again mention uh, you know, the titles that we've been talking about here today and also mention uh, how people can get over to your website and, uh, you know, get them Yeah, the website is oneheartbooks.com it is all spelled out and the books we were talking about today were Michael Hoffman's Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare. Uh, this book can be found uh, in the Mind Control and the Secret Society section of the store. Uh, the second book we were discussing were The Ancient Egyptian Roots of Christianity by Mustafa Gadala. And uh, I haven't placed this one in any section yet, so I have this uh, miscellaneous title section at the store, so this is where you can find that one on the site. Until I create, get an idea to create a section for it, maybe an Egyptian section or something like <laughs> that. Yeah. And uh, the third book we were talking about was The Power of Now, and this one is also in the miscellaneous title section by Eckhart Tolle. Excellent. So uh, again, the website is oneheartbooks.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, AJ, I'm, I'm looking forward to having you back on the show uh, again. I think this is very, very nice to break now and then, uh, now and again on the, on the regular programming and do a little bit of a book tips for people because there's, there's so much out there to read uh, and there's so much out there to dive into. And it's good to get a few recommendations and, uh, you know, ideas, basically, of, of what is out there. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely these books need to be discussed and uh, people need to be made aware that they, they, they are in existence and there's a lot of you know great individuals out there who have certain experiences and done research and, and they have uh, taken the time to put these books together for us and yeah that's right you know it's definitely important because as you know there's all this horrible stuff occurring um, this is something else that uh, Tolly mentions in one of his books about the, the paradox as things get worse, they're also getting better. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, a lot of these books and the knowledge coming out is certainly a part of things getting better. That's right, yeah. And, and they've done a lot of hard work, and it's, I don't quite remember specifically the, the quote that I have up on the homepage of the store, the Socrates quote, but he makes reference, you know, make use of, of, of the books and written material that, you know, men have uh, you know, put out hard work to put together, you know, make use of those kind of things, it's important. Well, exactly, before a, a new Fahrenheit 451 is upon us, you know? Yeah, right. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Um, okay, so again, AJ, I want to say, you know, thank you for coming on the program, and uh, I'm looking forward to having you back on again, so uh, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was just a great time talking with you, my brother. Thank you, and uh, I also want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in to the program, and uh, my thanks to Frederick behind the controls. Uh, our website, as you know, is redicecreations.com, and uh, this is Henrik Palmgren. Until next time, take uh, good care, everybody. Bye. -bye.